Ivan Helena. Raymond Pisano lives along East 15th Street. Three months ago, he was accustomed to telling stories like this. I swear, I, she must have been like 11 or 12 years old, it sort of seemed like. I, I don't know, I'm, maybe I'm a bad judge of that. And she said, can I borrow your telephone? I was like, no way I'm going to let you use my telephone. You know, it's like, what do you think? You know, yeah. you just, you know, you got to be careful, right? And she says, I just want to call my mom. Mm -hmm. It just broke my heart. Young women believed to be sex workers waiting outside his front doorstep. If you looked at the traffic or out, out at the street at nighttime when their headlights were on, it was thick with the exhaust of cars. We've often talked about the kids going to school and how they have to step over used condoms. He says what used to feel like a red light district now feels like a neighborhood. Pisano says it's gone from 30 women walking the street along East 15th to zero. And it's all thanks to these traffic barricades. But the problem didn't go far. Just asked Ivan Helena Laura. I saw one of the pimps uh, hitting in the face of one of the ladies. How often do you see that? Uh, frequently. It's, it's, it's usually every day. She lives at the corner of 21st and International Boulevard. The police is coming. The ladies go like that, like that, and then uh, go up when the police Pass. Trafficking operations have long plagued this area, but recent construction pushed the problem directly across from St. Anthony's grade school back in February. Father Gabriel, the parish pastor, told us this. Because if there is a, a violence uh, shooting, sometimes we experience those kinds. It's, it's worse me a lot. The safety of my parishioner. Father, prayers alone won't solve this problem. We, we start with prayer, but we have to end with action. The irony is the action taken to deter the problem away from St. Anthony's may be pushing it to other schools. In February, the alleged sex work and trafficking operations crowded at least seven blocks from East 15th to 22nd Avenue. Police sources told the I-team now the operations are becoming more discreet, occasionally visible in the Little Saigon neighborhood along International Boulevard. But parents are still reporting concerns around four schools nearby, including Franklin Elementary School, Garfield Elementary School, the Community School for Creative Education, and Roosevelt Middle School. The IT met with the San Antonio Neighborhood Coalition, a group of concerned parents and neighbors who are working to address that. Pisano is one of them. The, the pimps have recruiters or whatever, or they are recruiters, and they'll park outside the schools and they'll try to attract um, uh, girls to come and talk with them, to get in their car, um, and see if they can get them to participate. Younger uh, ladies, maybe 14, 16 year old. Some concerns that have been brought up um, from my after school program staff. Maricela Dianda is the managing director for Roosevelt Middle School, overseeing the after school program. We did have a, in a situation where two of our uh, middle school students were broad daylight when the bell rang, were uh, literally like taken into a car, um, thrown on the back seat. Um, don't know for what purposes. But Deonda says she hasn't personally witnessed any pimps recruit students on campus, but is worried it may be happening down the street where students hang out after school. Our students are normally known to go to San Antonio Park, which is about a block away from our school. Um, and there has been very suspicious uh, individuals or even cars. The San Antonio Neighborhood Coalition is meeting to discuss new efforts to crack down and make the existing barricades permanent. I want to make sure that because some of the activity is getting diverted to other neighborhoods that were also responsive to those neighbors. Oakland City Council President Nikki Fortunato Bass represents the area. Do you support making these barricades permanent? That is absolutely something I'm committed to doing. We are working with OakDOT to look at how we can do that. Will you ensure there's money in the budget for that? I am absolutely going to make sure that we have both the design for how to have those diverters remain and the funding. Uh, to make them remain. For now, a temporary fix to a decades-old problem. Nobody wants to risk losing these barricades. That's bringing back some peace and even some plants to East Oakland.
Now the mayor launched a human trafficking advisory council this week and we're told one of their first priorities will be allocating funding to help these other grade schools that are being impacted by the new barricades. For the I-Team, Stephanie Sierra, ABC 7 News. All right, we'll see if that makes a dent. Stephanie, thank you. If you have a story for the ABC 7 I-Team, call 1-888-40-I-Team or go to abc7news.com slash I-Team.